Jacob? Oh, I'm going first. G'day, I'm Jacob Cook. I'm an engineer working with the Binance Space Program. I'm primarily working on hardware design and payload integration. Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm also an engineer with the Binance Space Program. Graduated from Curtin in 2017. And I do everything comms related. Engineering, paperwork engineering, <laughs> everything else that goes into um, getting us communicating with the satellite. Okay, so a CubeSat is a satellite that's a cube. <laughs> I thought you were going to be serious with that one. <laughs> yeah, me too. A CubeSat is a small satellite, specifically in the size, Jacob, if you want to pick that up, in the size of a cube. It's 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. And that is a one U or a one unit of a CubeSat. Um, this is uh, the actual engineering model of BINA-1, which is our satellite that went into space in August 2021. Yeah, it's uh, an excellent tool for learning um, and it's a cheap way to, to get things into space. Um, so the CubeSat is a standardized form factor, which is, as Dan was saying, 10 by 10 by approximately 10 centimeters, uh, designed to fit into like a standardized deployment system, um, which is up on the International Space Station, can also be included in rockets and whatever. And yeah, you can, you can build your CubeSat to, to fit these deployers and then you can get put on ride share missions with other, with other people and it brings down the costs of putting things into space and it's a really excellent way for people to learn. All you need to run a spacecraft or a satellite is contained into this unit, which means if you compare the two, the rest of the space you get for mission, for science missions. And then this can also work with a 2U CubeSat or a 3U CubeSat, which means this space stays fixed, but the rest can be filled out by your mission, by a mission that you want to do into space. We call it the bus, which if, you, if we were to break it down, this is an earlier version of our bus. It has this satellite main board, this, this is it. And it's got all sorts of um, core circuitry in there that make the spacecraft run. So you've got a flight computer, you've got GPS, you've got a backup flight computer, you've got storage, you've got an inertia measurement, you know, you've got battery control, all that fun stuff that make a satellite work. And then on the back, you've got batteries. And you've got battery heaters wrapped around to keep them warm when they get cold and lonely. And then all of that comes together in this sort of shell here that allows us to run a satellite and to connect missions to it in a fairly straightforward and standard way. So the copper stuff around the outside, um, you can't, you can only see this one on the outside here. This is, uh, literally a winding of copper coil and it acts as a, an electromagnet. Now what we do with this is we use this, we run a current through it, which generates an, a magnetic field and we use this magnetic field to push ourselves off the Earth's magnetic field. So basically think of it like a reverse compass and it lets us direct the attitudes or control the attitude of our satellite when it's in orbit. So it doesn't change the altitude, it doesn't change the orbital parameters, it just changes its attitude, its direction, which way it's facing. And that allows you to point the satellite at things. So say if you had a camera in the payload bay, you can use the magnetorcus to steer the camera and say point the camera at the earth. You can point the camera at things you want to take pictures of. You can also use it um, for pointing antennas. So for instance, if you're using a quite a narrow gain antenna that needs to be pointed, you can use the magnetorcus to steer the satellite in order to get the correct uh, orientation. And this here at the top is an antenna module. It has, uh, this one runs in the UHF band or the uh, 70 centimeter frequency band. And these are of a specific length to allow it to receive radio frequency communication transmissions at 440-ish megahertz. So when the satellite is launched, normally all of these elements are stowed away, like you see Jacob holding this, uh, this one here. They're stowed away so that they can actually fit into the satellite deployer. Once it gets ejected or deployed into orbit, a 30 minute timer starts on the satellite, after which the antenna's deployment circuit is run, which does this to the antenna elements. So all four elements deploy within a few seconds of each other, and this allows us to speak to it from the ground. Yeah, as I we was saying, the, uh, the bus, the batteries, the main board, the frame of the satellite, the solar panels, the antennas, the radio, all of that is handled by us. That's part of the bus that is set, uh, it's gonna be a design that we've done, we've finalized. It's proven in space, it's been run up down one. Uh, that's not going to be changing. 
what we're going to be getting you to work on is included inside the payload bay. So this is a 3D print of the design that we've got currently for the payload bay. And then this is the PCB that will be going on top. So there'll be two versions of the payload bay. There'll be a completed version and there'll be a prototyping version. And the prototyping version of the payload bay is going to have an example microcontroller and it's going to have a control board and power that you can plug in and some soldering points. And on the prototyping board, you can put together your own sensors, you can put together your own payloads, basically, for space, and check that they work before you build a final copy, which can get integrated into the payload bay. So that will go inside here. And then the payload bay is placed inside the satellite from the base up, which actually, this connector plugs into the bus like this, the upside down. And then your payload will be able to interface with the satellite, and the satellite can control when it gets signals and when it gets data from your payload and it will be able to send it over the radio back to us here and then ideally back to you at your own ground station at your school. Your main consideration when you're building a payload in the payload bay is going to be space. Uh, obviously this is actually one-to-one -one scale for how much space you're going to have uh, and it's designed to be able to fit four payloads inside here. So if you imagine inside the top of this, if you divide that up into quarters, that gap and that height, that's how much space you've got in your payload. It's not a lot of space. So in addition to space, we've also got to consider power. So to the payload bay, there'll be the 8.3 volts coming from the batteries in the system. And this will be 8.3 volts at 2 amps, and that's shared between all four payloads. Uh, and then in, on top of that, you need to include a microcontroller. And the microcontroller is so that you can interface your sensors with the output through this connector. So this connector output has, for each payload, one I2C connection, one SPI connection, three GPOs, and then an enable line for the CubeSat bus itself to turn your payload on and off. And then through that interface, that's how we're going to get signals out from your, uh, from your payload to the radio, and then we can send the data back. Okay. But yeah, that's it. That's all I've got for this. Cool. Cool. Let's end with a, been a, we've been a squat gang sign. <laughs>